Hi everyone. I just want to start this video off by uh, thanking everyone who's watched all my other videos. Uh, I've got close to uh, 2,000 views on uh, three videos, so I'm really uh, pleased and I really do genuinely thank every each one of you for taking your time and watching it. Do like my videos, please subscribe as it will help me out a lot. So yeah, so I'm back again. Um, I'm in a, I'm fishing a tight little swim uh, overhanging trees. So when I get the cat on it, it'll be a lot of um, side straining, trying to get him in hopefully. Ho hopefully if I get one, uh, don't want to count me uh, chickens before they've hatched. But um, yeah, so fingers crossed, I've got 48 hours in front of me. And it's looking good. There's another three on the lake. Uh, a few have been out. Um, a few cats, about 60 odd pound or so, have been out. So I think they're back on the feed again. Yeah, so feeling confident. Fingers crossed. Next time you'll see me, I'll have a big old cat in the arm. Yes, mate. In with a cat. I've got a cat on. Couldn't film us, could ya? You want yeah? Yeah. Boy, it's taking some line. In a margin, yeah? You're trying to film with one hand, Roger, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> While on the phone. Mad. That looks like a nice size. Feel big? I'd be shocked if it ain't over 50. Yeah. Better not be a ten pounder. Imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> I look like right hand. I look like look quite pretty big when it come on. Just like to give a big shout out to Grant Kaplan. First day I ever met him. We had a good laugh, got to know each other. Very nice, genuine fella. And uh, he done some good filming for me, so thank you mate. Another one out, fell to atomic baits, 80 pound. Lovely. Look at the camera again. Yeah. 80 pound on the nose. Second cat of the session, 50 pound, bang on. Another second cat to session on Atomic Bait's pellets, bang on 50 pound. So, I'm going to show you all the rig I've been catching these big fish on the last few weeks, which uh, obviously definitely works. That 80 pound cat took me 10 minutes to get in, so they're obviously well strong enough. I played it really hard end up having about a five minute wrestle with it on the bank where it's so lively where I got in so quick but um, yeah a lot of people say you got to get him in quick so that's what I've done and yeah wrestling it on the bank that's why I'm so slimy but yeah so this is a quick rig I'll um, edit it a little bit and just show you the main three things tell you what I need to tell you and yeah here we go First of all, we'll grab some uh, braid of people's choice. Braid's braid, it's whatever you're comfortable with. I'd say a minimum of a uh, 100 pound braking strain you want. And I like to use the Flexi uh, 
braid with a little bit of flex in it. I don't like nothing too stiff. I find it just goes into the fish's mouth better and works better. As long as you, when you cast out, you feel it down so it straightens out and you can feel that donk with um, an anti-tangled sleeve. It should be laid out there nice and uh, presentable. So I always cut a nice bit off, longer than what I need, just so I can tie my knots and all that. Just put a standard overhand loop in it. Then I get a little bit of a bead. So that's the bead on there. Then I get a float stop. That float stops on there. So I slide that down. And with the thick braid, that's really tough and durable. Then I get two pellets. Put them on the hair user. I like a little bit of a twig as a hair stop. Uh, something I've used since I've been a kid and it's always uh, stayed on, never let me down. Uh, especially if you find a little twig with a couple of little notches in it. It uh, works really well. twig as a hair stop. Right, so a lot of people have problems with their pellets stand together. So that's why I use a little bit of a bead and the float stop so I can pull that down nice and snug. And then that, that ain't going nowhere. And they stay nice and together as one bait. And with the twig blocking the hole that end, and that float stop and bead blocking that end. It don't allow the water to get inside so they don't start breaking down from the inside as well as the outside. I use them for about five hours and I'm more than happy to uh, leave them out there. Uh, I leave them out there overnight, bring them in the morning. Obviously they have swollen up and if you fish a lake with a lot of small fish in it, say bream, roach and rudd and stuff, they could whittle down the pellets a little bit more. So I, personally, I don't like to leave them out for like uh, 12 hours like I would another bait. But uh, as soon as you put them in, they're working, like they're giving off all that uh, flavouring. And Right now, hook-wise, obviously everyone's got their own personal preference. I use... Um, the biggest, strongest calder hook they do, which is a size um, Kershank size one XXX uh, double X. Sun's on and that's it. And that's what I've had. Um, I've had three eighties, biggest eighty five, and they've all been on these hooks. Never let me down. Uh, like I said, I got that eighty pounder uh, yesterday. A fella come over and helped me filmed it and uh, he, he filmed it straight away and it took 10 minutes for me to get that 80 pounder in. So I put these through a lot of faults, put my the whole gear through a lot of faults just to test it out. I wanted to make sure that my gear can stand up to the job and it most definitely did. So when I do it, I like to hold uh, between the hook and the pellet, I like to hold about, I'd say about 10, 10 mil gap and then I just wrap it down, always go to where the um, the hooks curl round and meets the shank of the hook, always go that way. Just wrap it round about six to eight times. I like to go eight times, just a bit more security. So at the moment it looks like it's a bit baggy and far away. But then I get some shrink tubes. Slide that on with this really thick braid and the uh, 
big hook, you need, um, I used a 3.2 mil shrink tube. It's plenty big enough to do the job. Then, then I feed that down and I go just past the barb, like literally just past it. So at the moment, it looks like that. And then obviously I shrink that down at the end and just give it a slight ever little kicker on it. I know the uh, curved hooks all, almost give it their own kicker, but I just use that little bit up the braid just as a bit more added protection in the cat's mouth when you're fighting them. If that hook just goes in just behind the pad, your braid right on the hook is gonna take a lot of wear and tear. That's why I just like the shrink tubing for a bit of peace of mind. And um, when I had that cat yesterday, I've used the same rig again, there was no damage on whatsoever and it's hooked right in the side, so it's fine. But um, other times when I haven't used that shrink tube, it'd be a slight a bit of wear and tear and just peace of mind, I can't fish with it. It's almost like um, I have to be 100% wrong. If you ever think, like after a fish as well, you should feel a few rod lengths of your line, pull it out a little bit, just run your hands down it, make sure there ain't no little kinks or anything. Because the slightest little weakest spot that will let you down when you get a big cat on that. so you want to do all your checks before putting your rods out it's like if you went to fly a plane you wouldn't start checking it halfway through flight you do all the checks before it's the same with fishing and big cat fishing if you want to land these fish your gear's got to be 100 percent strong and uh, in all work in perfect order so then i'll put a uh, I'll put a bit of shrink tube on again so I can put a bit around the swivel as, as so I can uh, use it like a anti-tangle sleeve just think it helps to keep the bait out a little bit then I use the catfish pro 100 pound breaking strain swivels. I'm pretty sure they're a size six. They don't actually say on the packet, but they're, they're bigger than what I normally use. And then um, everyone's different. Everyone's got their own preferences, but I am a strong believer in the Palomar knot. 100%, 100% confident in using it. I. Um, I've done a few tests with my mates. We tied, uh, we got one length of line, uh, about 30 pound line. I tied a Palomar on a lead one side. He tied uh, two different knots on each side, what he's used for years, never let him down. And we both held each bit of thing, just give it a bit of tension. And it actually broke um, every time on the knot or in the middle of the braid, never broke on the Palomar knot and I only tied one knot. So yeah, you can all guess what knot he uses now. He uses the Palomar knot. But um, yeah, if you go on Google and type in world's strongest fishing knot, every time it come up and it'll say the Palomar knot. And the Palomar knot is the easiest one to do. So it goes through twice. So I've gone through the swivel twice. You just make a loop in it, go over the top. But if you um, want to start using it, then you pull the swivel, whatever you're tying on, through that. And then give it a good old soaking. And then you just slowly tease it down. And then there's a bit, a loop right near the swivel. You just have to make sure that goes at the top of the knot, but you just slowly tease it down. It almost goes into place itself. Might not pick it up, be a bit blurry, but that is the normal Palomar knot. But there's uh, in-depth videos on how to tie that. Once you know how to tie it, you will say it's the easiest knot going and it never has a weak spot it's the only knot what technically ain't a knot because most knots when you tie them they're always pulling tight so but with the Panama knot when it's done with double 
the, the way it is, it don't pull tight on itself, that's what makes it so strong. I use it with all my knots, and that how I found about it is when, uh, about six years ago, when I started up catfishing seriously, I just typed in on Google, what's the strongest fishing knot, and that is the one that come up, and uh, I've used it, and yeah, definitely the best knot I've ever used. So now I just put a bit of shrink tube up. So I've just shrink tubed that on a steaming kettle. And that. That is how I use my rigs. And I'll put a, a bit of tubing on with um, a running rig bead first, then the tubing connects to that. Then I use one of them for my lead. The lead clips on that end, and then that ring can slide freely over your tubing. And I have my drags set as loose as I can. And then as the catfish picks up your bait, that lead stays where it's at, and, you and the line just runs through it. And then, um, yeah, then you're away. So that's just a quick little thing on my video. Might have helped some of you out, hope it did, but that's the one I've been catching all these big fish on. And, um, yeah, so, hope you enjoy the rest of the video. Right, so this is a little video. <coughs> I've just got a couple of things I want to share with you, but, um, sort of feeling a bit confident that it could be bite time coming in it's just dulled off a little bit um, yeah it's just got a little feeling I'm just sensing a little feeling so fingers crossed while I'm waffling on one of them free rods screaming to action so uh, in my other videos I go on about uh, bat leading and the reasons why and in this uh, session where I'm not fishing out that far, I've just decided to slack line. Uh, I've got no features, no snags or anything I have to worry about. And where my line is uh, mono, it takes on the water after ages of being out there. And that allows it to become heavier. And then every, say, few hours, I slacken it right off. So my line's basically falling down from my rod tip. So it's on the bottom from my rod tip all the way out to the bait, sitting over any uh, obstacles that may be there, flat to the bottom. The reason why I fish like that is so um, I feel like the catfish, when they swim up and down through your swim, they don't come into contact with your line, so you don't get the fake runs and they don't spook off out your swim knowing that you're fishing there because they're a lot more clever than what people think. They know if there's um, people fishing in a swim, if they're fishing a tight pin line. So I find um, fishing a slack line just makes it so discreet and almost like you're not there. That's, the, that, that's what I try to achieve. That's also when I bait up, when I put my bait on my rods I'll cast it out and I leave it out there for hours and hours I don't touch it but every say hour or so I get about 10 12 pellets and just scatter them about a metre square around my hook bait and I've done that on one of my rods and that is the only one that's gone off the other ones I put a little bit of bait on and just left it and then one of my other rods I'm fishing um, a single hook bait just dotting there and about but yeah, the one I've had uh, the two cats on, out the margin, I've just been trickling a little bit of pellet over the top. So I definitely feel like that little bit of commotion, a little bit of fresh scent in the swim attracts them in, and then they spot my two pellets while I've been sitting there for hours, look all soaked in and look like to the fish have been there a while. And I think that's why they're confident on taking them. And that's why, like since I've been fishing, um, this lake for cats I've been leaving my baits out whatever bait I've been using it I've been leaving it out there for a long time and I've had 
three 80 pound cats now, over 80, uh, biggest being 85, and then I've had a 79 as well, and two 50s, and that's in six times ever fishing this lake. So, um, that's quite a good head of big ones, and I see other people catch smaller ones, and I just feel like that older bait laying on the bottom, with that fresh pellet for attraction coming in, they just pick out that old bait and they, they've got so much confidence on eating bait what's been left out their ages. That's my view anyway. If that makes a blind bit of difference, I don't know. But that's the way I fish. It works for me. So don't look like uh, the cats are gonna play ball for me. They don't wanna be on TV. <laughs> so I'm gonna switch off the camera, save my battery and uh, who knows, you might see me with another cat. Last few hours before I've got to go, I've just nicked a 77 out. Look at that. Yeah. 77. Lovely job. Hey look, come here quickly, because he's just, I'm just gonna let him settle. Rub your hand on there, quite hard it. So that's why you need the tube in. Because it goes round there. Why did it actually help then? What's that looking like? Yeah, God. 77 pounds on the whiskers. Get on atomic baits. The pellets, they love them. <laughs>